Hello creative ones, Michelle here from MixedMediaArt.net and I'm really looking forward to sharing this little project with you. So it's using our do-it-yourself envelope template that we've made here at Mixed Media Art, and it creates a C6 envelope and we've been using it the last few shows and I really wanted to share that fun little project with you. So let's jump in. Okay. So I've got all my bits and pieces here. I've got some paper, our Mixed Media Art C6 envelope template, and I've got some things to decorate it with as well. So the first thing we're gonna do, and it's such a fun and simple project, is take our piece of A4 paper, trace around it, and then cut it out. I like to cheat a little bit by putting two sides up by the edge. We're gonna trace around it. Now over the last few shows we've made lots of envelopes with people at all different crafting levels, even some young children and the great thing is it's quite a robust technique so you don't have to be super accurate on the cutting or the folding, it goes together pretty much a number of ways and like I said this makes a C6 envelope which is a standard size for an A6 card. A6? Yes, A5 folded in half. But the great thing is that you don't just have to use it as a traditional envelope. You could use it in portrait mode to make a little folio. It could be used to store things in or for a journaling panel in your art journaling or a text box in your scrapbooking. So lots of different options. Okay, so there you can see we've got that cut out. Now what I'm going to do before I decorate it is fold it in. And one of the simple ways we found that is by getting a ruler, just lining up those corners there, folding them in. And again, it's a pretty robust technique. It doesn't need to be too accurate. But of course, the better you fold it, the squarer your envelope will be. Folding in the corners. Folding in the other flap. And you can see that these two flaps are actually different sizes, which gives you different looks. Which again, as well, it's such a versatile template, you can get quite a few different looking projects from the one template. There we go. So let's fold that in. Make sure that they're all folded well. And then what I want to do is decorate the front. So I'm going to open it back up again. So today I'm going to use a Vicky P's stencil. I'm going to use one of my Dress My Craft transfers and some little words that I've created. So I'm going to pick my, trans my transfer first so I can decide what colour. And I'm going to use this. I've got two brown red, this vermilion. I think that's a good match. Now I've got our blending foam and our foam pad under it. Line it up. Now, thinking about composition a little bit, because we always get to use those skills whenever we decorate something. So because I've got this portrait, I want to create a bit of a horizon across the middle, just a little bit sort of about a third of the way across. So then when we put our focal point and our word on, it gives it something to anchor it to. So I'm going to line this up about there. Now we're using the archival ink because it is waterproof and when using these transfers that's really important because we need water to apply them so we want to make sure that we're using something that won't smudge so we don't have to worry about it smudging or going funny. Adding a little bit of ink with our blending sponge through the stencil and the great thing about using inks on stencils is they're really robust we can always lift it up and check go oh yeah that looks pretty good maybe add a little bit more and there we go pop the lid back on that we're going to return our sponge under there so we know it'll be there when we need it later now the other thing I might do so there we go we've created that horizon across the middle of the envelope and we don't want to put a border on it as well so we can use another one of the archival and we can do what's called direct to paper so not using the sponge this time just folding the edges and to adding that directly on to help create a bit of a border. Now the great thing about borders in our art is it helps draw our eye into the middle. So it's a really good way of adding some real interest that's quite simple by using those archival inks. Okay, there we go. So we've got our background decorated. 
We're now going to use these um, Desmo Craft transfers. And the great thing is that we can sort of decide where we want to put it. We can consider where we want to put our quote, where we want to put our image. Now this has been cut out from a bigger sheet and I'll have another video explaining how to use it a little bit more. First thing we need to do is pull off the front, discard that, then we want to turn it over, pop that down where we want it. And then we need water to get the back off. So I've got a little bit of water here on the sponge and we're going to dab it. And you can see why it's so important here that our ink is waterproof because we don't want that all smudging. We also don't want to add too much water because it is paper. And if we're putting this in our art journal, it gives us a little bit more leeway. And this just takes a little bit of time as well. So we want to add that water on sponge off anything that's too much so we don't get too many crinkles and then give it a minute and then we will find that it will there it goes a little bit more let it soak in and you'll find that backing will just pull away it's so much easier than rub ons it doesn't take all that extra effort and then it doesn't all come off in one piece. But there we go. Just be impatient with that side. So we've got a little bit more water. There we go. And you can see there, it's a little bit damp, but it will dry off, that we've added our transfer to our background. I just love it. You can see that it's slightly transparent, so you can see the um, stenciling underneath. Now I've got this little quote that I've done, put the art into heart, but I think it's a little bit big. So I'm going to get the scissors and just trim it down a little bit. Make it just a little bit smaller. Of course I could always use a paper cutter. There we go. Now I'm going to add this with a double sided tape. a little bit on there and of course the challenge with tape is that you've got to get down firmly before you can get the backing off but there we go and then we want to put it I want to overlap a little bit just there okay there we go now the last thing I'd like to do is using our gorgeous life of color pens I'm just give it a little bit of check before we use it now use this to put some highlighting around our quote. So I'm using it to sort of put some lines around. Now a lot of people say, oh, I'm not very confident with this one. Well, if you just put one line and you're not happy with it, put a few more lines. You get to a point where if you've got enough, that it helps really lift that quote off the surface. Excellent. I'm liking the way that looks. Okay, I'm just going to give that a little bit to dry. As I can see that it is still wet. So because the paint pen's over the shiny transfer, it does just take a little bit to dry. But it will dry and it shouldn't smudge too much at all. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, perhaps I'll show you a few of the other ones that I've created with our gorgeous template. So we've made a lot of these, like I said. So again, here we've got the stenciling, a different transfer with some words. Again, something similar, but using the stencil around to create a border. That's a Vicky P stencil as well. Here's one that's done in landscape, so you can equally use it that way. And then here's a few different ones. I've made this with a sheet of um, tracing paper or vellum and putting a card in it. So you could see how that would work really well with a journaling block or a gift card. These are perfect sizes for gift cards as well for those young adults in your life. I've used one of the luscious labels parchment stickers there so that helps with the whole see-through look as well and here's one I've created with a jelly print so again you can see that as a traditional envelope and like I said perfect for sending off cards you can use it for magazines there's so many different ways you can use it okay now that that is ready to go I'm going to turn it over now like I said the flaps are two different sizes so I'm going to create I've decided if I want it that way or I might want it that way so I think I'll have that side up this time and then I'm going to fold the bottom up. So you can certainly use glue. I like using double sided tape for the gel prints. We could use glue because sometimes the 
the tape doesn't stick as well to the acrylic paint. So there we go. So we're going to fold it like that, like that. And this is just such a quick way to get the envelope sealed. We don't have to wait for the glue to dry. And it creates that really cute little portfolio envelope, which I just love. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that demonstration. So we've used our mixed media art template with an A4 sheet of paper to cut it out. We've then done some stenciling with our Vicky P stencil and our archival inks so that they don't run and with our sponge. We then used our Dress My Craft transfer. We've added a quote and then we've added a little bit of doodling with our Life of Colour pen. So I really hope you enjoyed that. So I hope that's given you a few ideas on how you can use your do-it-yourself envelope template. Like I said, it's been so much fun creating all the different envelopes. You could use it with a C6 card, with a gift tag, or a pocket in your journal, or even a page in your junk journal as well. So for all the details, head over to our website, mixedmediaart.net. From there, you'll be able to find our online store, and we look forward to catching up with you soon. Have a crafty day.